Welcome to Electro Online. In this example, notice it's exactly the same as we did in the previous video with one difference is that in this case the charge is given as a surface charge density instead of a linear charge density. So it's given to us in terms of so many microcoulombs per square meter instead of so many microcoulombs per meter. Does it make a difference? It certainly does. Not a lot, but enough so that we might get confused and we want to make sure that we pay attention to how the charge is given to us or the distribution of the charge. Again, since the cylinder is a conductor, there's only charge on the surface. There's no electric field inside, only outside. And so therefore, we're going to try to find the electric field at a distance R away from the center of the, of the cylinder. Sometimes they will give you the question where they want to know the distance or the electric field at a certain distance away from the surface of that. So you have to take into account that we must look also at the radius of the cylinder as well as the distance away from the surface. Anyway, we're just going to say R is a distance away from the center of the cylinder carrying the charge. And then, of course, you have the Gaussian surface around it such that the surface of the Gaussian surface meets the point of interest distance R away from the center of the cylinder carrying the charge. Here we have the, the, uh, Gauss, uh, the Gauss's law, and then we solve that for E. Now we have to figure out what the Q inside is and what A, the surface area of the Gaussian surface is. All right, Q inside. Hmm. Well, we have a length L and we have a surface area. So the Q inside, let's see, Q inside is going to be equal to the surface area multiplied times the surface of the cylinder that carries the charge. Now notice that we don't worry about the end portion, we only care about the side that carries the charge. There will not be any charge on the, end, on the ends of the small piece of that cylinder. So in this case, that will be equal to sigma times the circumference times the length. The circumference will be 2 pi times the radius of the cylinder, which is A, 2 pi A times the length. So that will be the surface area of the section of the cylinder that carries the charge on the outside. That's the surface times the, what we call the surface charge density, multiply the two, that gives you the charge inside the Gaussian surface for the length L. That goes in the numerator. So E is equal to sigma times 2 pi A L divided by the surface area of the Gaussian surface to which the electric field emanates. So we have electric flux, which is only on the side of the cylinder, not at the two ends. So again, that will be 2 pi. In this case, the radius will be r, not a. So this will be 2 pi r sub g times l and times epsilon sub naught. Notice that the l's cancel, the 2 pi's cancel, and we're left with the electric field is going to be equal to sigma, which is the area charge density times the, that would be the radius of the cylinder divided by R sub G, which is the radius of the Gaussian cylinder, which indicates the distance away from the center cylinder where we want to know the electric field strength times epsilon sub naught. And this will then be the equation we need to find the magnitude of the electric field. Again, sigma is given to us. A is the radius of the cylinder. R sub G is the distance from the center of the cylinder to the point where we want to know the electric field, and epsilon sub naught simply the permittivity of free space. And that's how it's done.